regular at work here. Rejected. That's what he said. Nadine, don't you give up. Sign here. Welcome to one eye tracks, Hester. Gentlemen, place your bets. Jock, is it? That's me. Say goodbye, James. What's up, Doc? I want to see you. about your show because it comes on later at night and I'm usually home by myself but the music starts playing and you're watching the television and, and you're you, just like I don't want to do it <laughs> so I you like too. run into the kitchen and then you go back into the living room and you're I watching know, it for a little while you. I mean I usually go to the basement the music the music it's what's really gets everybody going into the show I'll tell you you it's gotta what... invite some friends over clearly. Yeah. <laughs> yes yes just I want to know if they made a few different um, endings instead of just one. Did you make you have a different uh, well, plot line in Europe? Yeah, the, the ending that you'll see on Wednesday night at ten um, is one of several that we worked on. Depending on whether we got picked up for the fall or not, um, I wanted to either polish it off or not polish it off. And I assume you have not polished it off. Uh, they're working feverishly not to polish it off right now. So. Along the lines of the music, I I hear it as being seductive, and I wondered the symbolism with the Twin Peaks. I, uh, hmm. I don't want to touch that. Uh, yeah. uh, well, I mean, we, we we drew a map when we started designing the town, and there were these two mountains, and uh, we said, "What are we going to call this town?" So, I think one of us said, two mountains," and no, that won't work. Twin Peaks, and that's what we stuck with. Are you there, caller? Hi. Hi. First of all, I feel sorry for the people that haven't watched the best show on television. But my question is, I can tell the difference when David Lynch has directed an episode. I mean, no, I don't have to read it. I can see it. And I wonder, first of all, if the actors feel the difference. I'm sorry, Mark, but I wonder if the actors can feel the difference as well as I wonder how much he will be directing since it is now picked up in the fall. Will he stay with us? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, David directed three of the nine hours, and um, he's definitely going to be back for his schedule, depending, but he'll be back for as much as he can be next year. And as, in response to the other question that she asked, uh, how we felt about the other directors, I mean, I think all the directors brought something of themselves into it, and also, you know, David and Mark have an oversee over the whole thing, so it's still their effect on, on how the show is going to come out. Yeah. Um, I I'm sorry. I haven't watched Twin Peaks because the first two weeks I wasn't home, so I didn't want to get into it. Well, that's not an excuse. Wait, 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 wait. Just sit down. One second, one second. Um, I don't know who is responsible, but whoever I have spoken to has says the greatest casting is the FBI agent. The way he plays the part is just, you know, I'm not commenting on anyone else's acting ability. Yeah, Kyle MacLachlan um, has a long history with David. He appeared in Dune. He was discovered by David in Seattle, oddly enough. Um, played the lead role in Dune, and then also was the lead in Blue Velvet. And in writing the piece, we thought, yeah, yeah. he's wonderful. Yeah. Let's, let's use Kyle. We, we wrote the part with him in mind. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Peppy, which do you prefer, the uh, movies or TV, as far as acting? Uh, it really depends on the material. I like them both. I like the theater. Yes. I, I had an eight-hour, I mean, seven-hour film festival yesterday of Twin Peaks watching every episode in a row. And, uh, yeah. and you made it here today. I made it here today. I stayed up all night. And uh, the question is, during the dream sequence, do they tell who the murderer is? Is it relayed? Um, that? The character that Cheryl plays in the dream whispers who the murderer is to Kyle, but unfortunately the microphone wasn't close enough. <laughs> is there a clue? Is there a clue? Yes. Yeah, quite a number of them. Uh-huh. It's Leo Johnson, isn't it? Isn't it? Is that, is that who I'm thinking of? Uh, yes, Eric's yes. character. You want me to answer that? Well, you probably don't want to, do you? Definitely not. No. Are you there, caller? Hi. Hi, uh, yeah. My name's Mark from Hofstra University, and the people at Hofstra have our own theory of who killed Laura. Yeah, we what think, is it? We think that Laura really isn't dead, and she dressed up Madeline to look like Laura, and now she's really... Oh, well done. You, you agree? Yes. 
This theory is getting a lot of credence, apparently, across the, the country right now. Uh-huh, so that the body wasn't Laura, the body was the look-alike, right. was Madeline, right. who Laura is now playing, no, who... Uh, and then, <laughs> yeah, you've got to... Cheryl is now idea. playing, yes. When you get the script, do you just get the lines that you're performing so the rest is a mystery to you, or do you get the no, entire they, they script? The entire script. But it's basically a mystery because you yes. can't really think of all the other things that are going on. You have to concentrate on yours, or you'll be completely confused. Yes. Uh, yeah, Mark, I think that your show is a psychological breakthrough, and I was wondering if you think that maybe you're setting a new standard for the future of television. Well, you know, one can only hope. I mean, we, we try to do the best story and show that we could, and if that breaks down a fence that other people can, you know, follow us through, then I'm delighted. Hi, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Hi, uh, this is for uh, Mark for us. Yeah. Now, I know who did it. <laughs> okay? Who did it? John Nance, but he was Henry. But you, gotta, you had to see a racer had to find out. Uh, well, uh, it's definitely a uh, what is the total number of featured characters in the in the series? Thirty-five. Well, that's why I have trouble <laughs> yeah. keeping up with it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There was a murder on Long Island here not long ago, and a girl was found in a plastic bag. Is any of this taken from a real situation? Or uh, is it no, all... I didn't hear about that. But we yeah. do have the tabloids descending on a town in Washington State. Poor, Sno poor Snoqualmie Falls. I mean. Snoqualmie Falls. Yeah. And they're claiming that we got uh, bodies along the side uh, of the road and chainsaw duels in the woods, the whole thing. Yeah. Since you're now famous for being on Twin Peaks, has your personal life changed? Cheryl, you want to talk about that? You're our. Uh, this My is your first uh, television effort. So I'm sure it won't be your last. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so far, no. Nothing really has changed. I mean, it's certainly opened up doors, thank God, it, as far as work is concerned, but. My personal life isn't really... I do, every once in a while, I get people saying, you know, you're Laura Palmer, and, but that's about it. Yes. Hi, Phil. I love the show. I love the music, the direction, and everything. But just tell me, yes or no, did Laura's father kill Laura? Because that's my theory. <laughs> Definitely, maybe. <laughs> yes. The show sort of came out of nowhere and is, was an almost immediate hit. And I'm just wondering, most shows end with a cliffhanger. Do you think maybe some of the success of this show is attributable to the fact that it began with a cliffhanger? Well, I think everybody loves a mystery. I think life's a mystery, you know, and uh, that probably hooked a lot of people early on. That was part of our, our approach. Yeah. Well, all of us have read Agatha Christie and have been disappointed when the clue that she said was so commonly... I can't see. It will never be. The clue <laughs> that was given was obvious to the reader, and it becomes hidden under so much that you can't see it. Yeah. The final episode could turn viewers off in saying, well, I didn't get that. I didn't see that. Where yeah. was that? I mean, that, do, that's a, that's a yeah, reality. Yeah, it's, it's a danger, I guess, whenever you plot something this intricately, but... We'll see what happens on Wednesday. Are you there, caller? Hi. Yeah, hi. A question for Mark and any of the actors. Uh, there are so many red herrings here. I'm curious to know how much of the story was plotted before production started and how much the actors knew about uh, the, the various plot lines. Well, we thought it was provident to keep them in the dark as much as we possibly could. And uh, the scripts rolled out as we were working. Had two other wonderful writers who I should mention, Harley Payton and Bob Engels, worked on the show as well. And um, uh, so that I, I think we kept you sort of out of the loop and for the most part. The yeah. still in the dark. did because now that we're doing publicity for it, everyone wants to know and we're trying to, you know, in order for us to tell the truth, I don't know, I don't know. We saw the last five pages of the, the show that's on Wednesday. I didn't know yeah. right. there were but, five. Uh, but yeah. to, return to, this, <laughs> to return to this woman's question, you cannot tease an audience forever. No, I you assume can. you and agree. I, I agree. And, and I think um, with the pickup now for